Do Nepal have the most cricket mad fans in the game? Probably not, but yeah, they're very, very high up there. I mean, Bangladesh is pretty, pretty full on as well. Um, but yeah, Nepal is an incredible country that really doesn't get into cricket until what, 20, 25 years ago, around the same time Afghanistan did. And Afghanistan, there are parts of Afghanistan that love cricket, um, and it's become such an important thing to Afghanistani culture. Whereas Nepal haven't really had any of that kind of success, right? They're not, they're not big in the same way. And yet domestic tournaments over there can just mm. get ridiculous crowds. And, you know, I, the, I know commentators who are not particularly famous people by any stretch who get treated like dignitaries over there just for going over. So they have embraced the, it um, massively. So um, I don't know if either of you know of a player called Paris Kadka. Either you of me? you know Paris Kadka? No. So he's probably the second big best player they've ever had, right? And he's like in the top five or six most f uh, famous people from Nepal. If you look at the list of most famous people from Nepal, he's in it, right? And he retired partly because of the, the pressure and the politics of the poly Nepalese cricket got to him, right? He was just like, I just want to go out there, you know, play my cricket. But instead, I've got all this politics going on. I've got all this pressure and, and everything else. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> You know, like, if, if you're an Omani cricketer, like, I'm sure, no matter, you, Bilal Khan, great player from Oman. No one knows who Bilal Khan is in Oman, right? So completely different of associate cricket. So it's, it's a fascinating culture. And then you, you watch them at these games and these... I didn't know there were that many Nepalese people in the world. But how did they all get to Dallas, right? How are they in the West Indies? <laughs> that, that, the game they played in Dallas, it might as well have been played in Kathmandu. Well, I mean, there are actually, if you go to a lot of Indian restaurants in this country, they are either Bengali or they're yeah. Nepalese, right? Okay, so yeah. they do travel uh, in numbers. They're, they're, they're everywhere. But how is Nepal going to make the... I know they're, they're at the T20 World Cup, but how are they going to do an Afghanistan? I mean, realistically, I think they're probably behind the curve at the moment just because they haven't... If you look at Afghanistan, so when Afghanistan get to the 2016 World Cup, Rashid Khan is coming through. Yeah. And they've also got a lot of really good senior players. Whereas Nepal have probably, in losing Paris Kadka when he was quite young, and they've lost a couple of other players, they didn't quite have the overlap. You know, even Ireland had a little bit of an overlap, right? Yeah. Where some of the older guys were there um, and some of the younger guys were there at the same time, you know. So Sterling and Belboni can play with Joyce and O'Brien and everything. And I think Nepal's just missed that. Do you know what I mean? When you miss that kind of golden generation. I feel like when Ireland. Started playing test cricket, really. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and they had not a lot left by that. So, and um, the same thing happened in Bangladesh, right? Bangladesh, well, they got rid of all their old players, but it was a similar thing. You either had all old guys who weren't quite good enough or all young guys who didn't know how to play professional cricket. Nepal's probably in that stage, but in the next five to ten years, they should be pressing for a test spot, right? Because there's enough interest there. Um, it is, you know, such an important game over there. And they are clearly, you know, I was, I was watching them play against Bangladesh last night and you... Their batting is going to take a little while. They've got a lot of bowling talent. They've got m masses of spinners. And not those sorts of, not like Namibia spinners or like Oman spinners where you're like, they're defensive spinners. It's like, we're talking proper spinners who are ragging it both ways and, you know, you know getting good energy. And they've, they've been pretty good at getting medium fast bowlers. They need to start getting fast medium bowlers and then fast bowlers in that next generation. So, so far, that's been their problem. And then, and then the lack of batting. But... We know it's there. We know that the, the energy of cricket, but they might have a similar problem to... So I think one reason Afghanistan had a huge step forward was Pakistan. Because so many of those guys grew up in Pakistan yeah. and they grew up under, around professional environments. Mm. The ne Nepalese players are not are growing up in what... Very similar to what Bangladeshi players grew up in, which is a club culture, right? And you go back to Ireland again. Ireland was... If it didn't have the all the players in counter cricket, would, it would have taken them a lot longer to develop. But in five or 10 years time, I just think they're going to have enough players that are going to start, you know, performing, um, you know, at least at a Netherlands level. Um, and I would have thought at the level above Netherlands potentially because of the talent and the passion coming together at the same time. Pro Conditions aren't always great up there though either. Probably, like, need, probably like yeah. where he's from. Yeah, probably, but they probably need a, a superstar. Afghanistan had an absolute superstar yeah. to look up to and you know, you're always, you know, when remember Rashid Khan was in the IPL or he's in a big bash, it was, IP, it was from Afghanistan. He was, he was the, 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 the sort of, I think the, the driving force for all the, play, the players in Afghanistan to, well, if he can do it, 
we can do it. And I think Nepal might need one of them. But you're right. Big, they, big stars to, to, to get into the, the big bash. But they also had Muhammad Nabi and, and, yeah. You, yeah. Know, and um, uh, you know, some of those other older good players. Um, but if you think about Afghanistan, they, we had two periods of Afghanistan cricket. We had, where they had three fast bowlers who could all bowl 90 miles an hour, yeah. right? And then off the back of that, Rashid Khan came in and then suddenly you had Mujib as well. And then you have all the left arm wrist spinners that they have. Nepal's had Sandeep Lamachani, who obviously has his own problems with courts mm. of laws and all sorts of things, but he isn't at Rashid Khan's level, no. which is also what Harm is saying. And then Paris Kadka is probably just below the Muhammad Nabi level as well. And so, and then he leaves and they don't have those other, um, those other players. But I think in five to 10 years time, I think they're going to have a lot of talented players and they can start to really come together. Money and professionalism is a massive issue. Um, like the Netherlands should probably, if you look at how good the Netherlands have been over the last, what, 10 or 15 years now, and they haven't really pushed for test match status, it's because they don't have enough talent coming mm. through. We know that coaching structures are good over there. We know that they find really good players from around the world. We know that they're now with Peter Saylor and Vikram and Baz Delita. They're making their own really good natural players. But Nepal's going to be picking from a talent pool of 500 people. Yeah. And Netherlands is maybe picking from a talent pool of 100 people. So you would think that those numbers eventually went out for them. Uh, and the next T20 World Cup is going to be in Sri Lanka and India. And if Nepal are there, you'd, you'd think with this tournament under their belts, and playing in conditions that may be a little bit more familiar to them than what they've had in the Caribbean and America. I still want them to have a 90, no, not even a 90 mile an hour bowler. They need a... An 85 mile an hour bowler who can bang it into the deck. Like something a little bit different would be good for them. They, they seem to have a lot of like sort of whippy medium pace. Do you know what I mean? Like the 82 miles an hour. Still a little yeah. bit. Yeah, good bowlers and, and they're talented. Um, so I think they need that. But spin in those places, you're right, John. I mean, they've got, they've got two really good wrist spinners. Uh, who knows what Sandeep's future is? They've got another good wrist spinner coming through. They've got plenty of finger spinners. But they also need, and this Afghan, you could say this about Afghanistan mm. up until about two years ago, you just need guys who can average 35 in international cricket and, and, and knock the ball past mid-off and mid-on. And now that Ibrahim is playing well uh, for Afghanistan, we saw that you know, their top four in the, last world, in the ODI World Cup it's, we all knew how good Afghanistan was for a long time, but they really didn't have a batting order that could back up their bowling. I think Nepal's in a similar position to that, um, but it's a slightly more stable country from, you know, politically and everything than Afghanistan. Not massively, but certainly more stable than Afghanistan is. So you would hope that with that level of passion um, for the game... Tournament and, experience as well. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing. They missed... So they didn't qualify for the 2016 qualifiers. Mm which is an abomination. Mm. They're way too good. Singapore beat them, right? That's, well, that's how we got Tim David, right? Yeah. Singapore. Tim David started playing for Singapore and then ended up going around the world. So they, that, that cost them massively because that would have given them a really good bunch of qualifying events against really good teams. They were probably at a level then of not too far off, let's say Scotland and Ireland and the Netherlands. And they didn't get all that experience. So a whole generation missed out. And then, of course, we didn't have a World Cup for ages and all, yeah. that, you know, all that sort of stuff. They just need to play more cricket, get a couple of blokes who are six foot four who can hit the wicket, and then a couple of guys with a good front elbow who can whack the ball down the ground um, for them occasionally. And it's a really good team. But because of all the advantages they have of people loving cricket um, and, a, and a wide talent base, I just think they're going to get there a little bit quicker than some of the other teams are. I mean, Namibia have about 14 people who play cricket you know, over there. Like They're overachieving, whereas Nepal so far have underachieved. That was for all the Nepal cricket fans who've contacted us to say, can you talk about Nepal cricket? Yeah. Subscribe. They're going to be really upset with all that. They're going to say, no, you, you know, you, no. you should have mentioned this player. You should have... But look, I talked about Paris. They'll be happy I talked about Paris. He's very popular over there. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.